What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Week 5 Swolecast here on Rotogrinders.com. I'm David Kitchen, wearing a hat that fits. Uh, thank you, YouTube comment section. I am with Peter Overzet. Peter, how do you do? Doing good. Got Tweet Deck up so I can uh, recommend Stefan Diggs against the Redskins this week. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that's old news by the time people watch this show. Kitchen oh, yeah. has no idea what you're talking about because he hasn't checked Twitter oh, yeah. in the last ten minutes. Yeah, um, I have. I have no. I have no idea either. He, he uh, Stefan Diggs on Wednesday missed practice due to a personal reason, non-injury related, per Ian Rapoport. And there was all this stuff where he was following all the Patriots on Instagram, so that was fanning the flames. So yeah. Okay, I was wondering why. Uh, I was wondering why he was playing the Redskins this this week. Yeah, that's what I. That's the one I didn't catch. Well, just the Patriots, just they get everyone right. Once Next they level. got Antonio, once they got Antonio Brown, people just think like that's it. They're they're just gonna keep getting all the dudes. All right, uh, we got Davis Maddock. And Mr. Tuttle 05. Tuttle, have you consumed any alcoholic beverages? No, I need to. I got I got some coffee ready to roll. Some, uh, some coffee, some hot takes. Yeah. How was last night? Uh, I didn't. I, I haven't asked you. With the, uh, the the Nationals and Brewers. Oh, I went to bed before the game was over. Oh. It it, it was going way too well at the beginning of the game, where you, you could kind of tell. Like it was it was a fitting end of the season. Hater has not been consistent this season, so. It was unsurprising. As a Cubs fan, I felt that. Uh, like, I felt that loss. Um, also, Tuttle, can you debunk the the notion that um, kids eat craft slices for movies in yeah, Wisconsin? That's, that's, that's a brutal. I don't know who, who did that poll or whatever. <laughs> that, that, that thing was clearly just like a meme. Like that, it's like that, that was not something that was based on reality at all. It was, it was, it just was jokes. State by state candies at the movies based on, uh, Google search results and Wisconsin was craft singles. <laughs> craft singles. That just Can't the trashiest do, right? of tra- That's not even considered cheese in Wisconsin. That is. Wisconsin people would not craft. eat that. You know who no. loves craft singles? Is this going to be a Jupiter, Florida joke, Dave? Massage parlors in Jupiter, Florida. <laughs> You're already there. We have that connection. All right, let's get started. Overview for week five. Also note that uh, Davis is making us record a day early. It's so you get bad. an extra. It's going to be bad. Every, every person except for Tuttle and Overzet said this worked better for them. Simon said, you said the same thing. So let's just not, let's not make this about me, Dave. Oh, I was still going to do it tomorrow, but you're like, uh, hey. Hey, Dave, uh, we got, uh, <laughs> <laughs> got a little bit of a situation I gotta, I gotta here. Gotta believe, I just, I just here. learned three minutes ago that I got a wedding I gotta I got go a to. wedding. I thought we were leaving on, uh, Friday. Turns out we're leaving on Wednesday afternoon. But man, All just, right. just imagine how bad our takes are on a Thursday. So one, we got one less day to prepare. We don't know who's playing who. <laughs> False. It's it's gonna be bad. False. All after last week, my whole mantra is like, we're gonna have a good show this week. We have a good show. And that's like, let's record on Wednesday. All right, forget it. There's always <laughs> next week. Who cares? <laughs> well, Kitchen has all the wide receiver cornerback shadow matchups memorized. I think he's got the chart memorized, so we're not gonna have any embarrassing Casey who, Hayward situations this week. Yeah, who, who's Devonte Parker gonna steal coverage from this week so Preston Williams can shine? Uh, Tyrone Mathieu. <laughs> I mean, I, honestly, if you guys gave me $100 right now, I don't think I could say that dude's name right. His last name is literally pronounced Matthew. Yeah, it's just Matthew. Is it, though? It's not spelled <laughs> yeah, that way. Yeah. <laughs> just like Ronald is just pronounced Ronald. Ronald. <laughs> All right. How do you say, how do you spell Ronald? <laughs> Play the hits. All right. Uh, Speaking of Ronald, we might have a Ronald take later. Um, let's talk about overview though with, uh, Overzet. Overzet's overview. Here we go. That's what right. It's it? the Overzet overview of the week. Thanks for tuning in to Roto Grinders. This week, you're going to want to pay up in cash for it. Now, um, I can't do that. Uh, my overview of the week, it seems like there's not near as many options as there was last week, especially at quarterback and tight end. It seems pretty thin. Are you so- kidding me right now? What? Of all the weeks. What? You should, it's a Kyler Murray week. Yeah, dude, I'm off. I, I, no, nope, no, nope. take it back. Through. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Come on. Tom Brady costs 200 dude, more dollars stand, than Kyler dude, Murray. Dude, come on. 
No. He Stay does strong, look, Peter. Four, four yards down of the field every week, pass. Of all this is week. not. This is not. I, you know what? Having overset on this show, the pressure is really getting to him. Wow. He, he, he failed touting four times, and now he thinks he's got to quit. <laughs> Hey, Peter, Peter, please, can you stand up and show us where Kyler touched you? Hey, hey you know what I'm going to show up? I'm going to stand up and I, I'm going to show you guys my Bayesian process, okay? I have to incorporate new information as we get it. Guys, the Cardinals aren't who we thought we are. We just, we got to give it up. They Except are, they're Johnson. exactly who, they're exactly who we thought. They suck, but they run a lot of plays, dude. No, who we thought they were was stretching the field and throwing the ball deep down the field like they did in week one. And now every target is five yards down the field. Okay, but yeah, hear, that, hear me that out. Is a little rough, okay, but, but hear me out, hear me out. Um, first of all, we need to give Lord Reeves his due. This is the horizontal raid as opposed to the air raid. However, this week, the reason why I think you can do Kyler game stacks and Andy Dalton game stacks is one, Mixon and David Johnson are both cheap. And two, the wide receivers in this game are mega cheap. Uh, cause like, I think we're gonna have Sherfield, Keyshawn Johnson, Auden Tate, all these guys being playable. So you can do game stacks with all these guys, and those game stacks can include McCaffrey, Julio Jones, DeAndre Hopkins, all those guys. So I, I, I actually, I think it's fine, again, to run back Arizona, Cincinnati game stacks. I'm just like shocked right now. I am, I am legit shocked. I thought this, like, if all, it's called staying on brand, Peter. Jeez. You know what? I don't care about a brand, guys. I just want to give the listeners good, actionable picks. That's what they tune in for. Can you Dave. get the mans on the show for <laughs> it? It'd be the first time anyone ever tuned into this show to get something actionable. Oh, gosh, yeah. All right. Uh, they tune in for cash game lineups, so that's for sure. <laughs> Davis, you already mentioned it before about the cheap wide receivers. Does that mean you pay up for all the running backs this week? Well, the thing about this slate is that it kind of sucks. There are no game totals <laughs> over 50. Uh, the two teams that have super high totals, uh, so higher than four touchdowns, are the New England Patriots and the Philadelphia Eagles. Both of them are favored by 12 or more points. And you look at the Eagles roster, and I don't think there's literally one play that you like. Uh, they have this massive team total. I don't think you want to play any of those guys because the volume is so hard to project week to week. So it just it just feels brutal. Ertz, dude, air yards by low model. <laughs> oh, 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 the air yards by low model is coming for Zachary Ertz. Dude, Mr. Mr. No Yak himself. He's cheap AF on FanDuel. Yeah, I, I yeah, he, he's a play on FanDuel. Yeah, yeah, Davis looked at FanDuel once, he knows. 6,600, 6, bro, how you like that? I know oh, a FanDuel price. he's got the price. You, like, you like that, Dave? On a Wednesday, to, I do to, like To be fair, he's 2,000 more than the flowchart tight end. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> we have to we have to figure out which flow chart tight end that's going to be. Um, Dude, the flow chart hurts. So I faded Disley. I faded Disley. I played like twelve hundred lineups last week, and I played zero Disley. It was bad. I didn't even and play him in the four p.m. only slate. I played a bunch of Noah Fant instead. Well, wide receiver and was scored what, a touchdown. Yeah, he wide did, receiver he did not was, outscore was, Disley. Was brutal last week. All these wide receivers just basically died. Um, I feel like I hit on all my running backs, zero wide receivers, and then Waller was just a big tease in the first half. Had like 11 points, and he just gets one catch in the second half. Meanwhile, Disley just immediately, immediately just like throws lineups in the trash. Well, when you look at the matchups, bro, it's just the Cardinals. They just they can't defend tight ends, and I think that we should just accept that they're going to – like. The donkeys are going to get there every week with tight ends against Arizona because that's the way life goes. The donkeys got their FanDuel lineups back without the drop score, and they get their tight ends every week. Uh, Tuttle, what's your overview of the week? Yeah, that was pretty good, saving at wide receiver. I do. I agree that the quarterback position is a little bit thinner this week on where you want to go in cash games. Um Wide receiver, I, it does depend on site though. Which, uh, DraftKings, we have Auden Tate, that's only 3,500. Uh, FanDuel, he's up at 5,300, so he's not quite as big of a value there. Uh, but Tate is super cheap. He's probably going to be a lock in cash games on, on DraftKings. But on FanDuel, you have Larry Fitzgerald, that's still under 6K. Uh, you have Marquise Brown, who's 5,400. Uh, so yeah, cheap at wide receiver, um, expensive at running back, and in tournaments, probably flip flop that because, DeAndre Hopkins, Julio Jones are really, really good plays on this slate. Um, yeah, and you can play Nuke Hopkins. By the way, uh, shout out to uh, Stephen Byron Keach. 
SBK in the office this week, he called him Nuck Hopkins, and he was serious, and we had a, an hour-long conversation see, about it. See a fan I don't of the show? Done that, see, yeah. see a fan of the show? Obviously not a fan of the show, but uh, he knows now. But as, as far as those new game stacks on, on FanDuel, you got to play the most expensive tight end. I mean, it's literally, this is literally, like, stacking that game is, like, the number one most chalk donkey thing you can do this week is stacking Carolina Houston, or uh, Atlanta Houston. Did you see who the number one, the highest price? Price tight end on FanDuel was? Who? Austin Hooper. Austin Hooper. And do you know who Austin Hooper gets next week? No, no way. Does he oh, play gosh. Arizona? <laughs> <laughs> watch. Ooh. Watch he'll have like a mediocre game and Peter will be off of him next week. Did, did, Sm- <laughs> did Smiz, did Smiz post the flow chart? I literally no, like couldn't no, look at it Twitter. It was like the most, it was the, it was like a sad flow chart. Yeah, tweet. yeah, yeah. <laughs> because he said he messed up so much that he couldn't even take joy. He just hoped that everyone else could take joy in the flow chart tweet. Hey Dave, you, I did need to circle back on something you referenced. Uh, Steven, wasn't he your golf partner? I don't know if we got an update on how your golf yeah, how outing you? went. <laughs> it was not good. Oh man, imagine Dave. Golfing. Imagine Dave swinging a golf club. <laughs> <laughs> and then imagine that, and then imagine like being even worse than what you thought. Oh, the top man. golf instructor told me that um, he could never believe that I hadn't golfed before. <laughs> If he would have seen my performance, he would have believed it. Uh, I will also Ooh. say that Keach, not great at golf. Uh, Noto, eh, my other teammate, but we had fun. We had more fun than all the other teams on the course. And that's how that's what how it's measured. Yeah, uh, Tuttle didn't even make it out to the RG Golf Classic, so he, yeah, dude, Tuttle has nine kids. You think that guy's going on vacation to go golf? David didn't even invite me. It's a tough scene. Yeah. Maybe next, maybe next, <laughs> be better. All right, uh, let's talk about quarterbacks as, as we open up DraftKings. Let's talk about Lamar Jackson. Davis, you know yeah. the stat: only one quarterback over twenty points each week. For I don't. First I don't care about any of that. I just actually think that Lamar might not be. I think that Lamar and his pass catchers may not represent the chalk this week, and I especially think that all of the bring-back options are going to be um, single-digit owned because people are just going to be focusing. This is It's always this really interesting thing that happens in weeks where there's not like uh, like a bunch of good totals is people just kind of gravitate towards these weird chalk spots, and I think this one is obviously going to be Atlanta-Houston. Uh, I think people obviously are going to play Brady as well, but like I, I can really imagine a scenario where – like Lamar and Marquise Brown as a combo is like under 10% of teams in like the millionaire maker. Yeah. Marquise Brown burned a lot of people on FanDuel last week, Tuttle. Yeah. He'll be, he'll be high owned on FanDuel again this week, but DraftKings, he's still, he is at a price the where he won't be. air yards by low guy. Yeah. First week I played him it was not great. <laughs> yeah. Although, I mean, it was, Unless you were targeting that, yeah, wide receiver was terrible. Last yeah, week. it was. It, I mean, Watkins, oh. Keenan Allen, dude, Sammy Watkins, bro. Oh. It Get was, it together. Get it together, Sammy. Absolutely brutal. All right, um, Peter, you don't want to play Kyler. Who do you want to play this week? I don't want to play any quarterbacks. I want to take the zero and prove how <laughs> good I am at DFS. <laughs> well, I was when I pulled up the RG ownership and I saw that Watson was going to be the high. I like. I was shocked because I, I've been more, t- I haven't been more tilted than watching Deshaun Watson in this offensive line all season. So if people want to go down that rabbit hole, I think I want exposure to that game on the other side though, and might just run it with Matt Ryan. Um, and oh, cause he's really looking great. Hey, at least his offensive line will keep him up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who do you I guys like- think will be more owned between the two quarterbacks in that game? Oh, Watson by Watson, Watson, Watson for, sure. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I and again, if I'm gonna fade Kyler and I'm gonna go on the other side, I'm willing to go uh, down 600 and play uh, Andy Dalton. Yeah, oh. Dalton Dalton is the way to be alpha with that game because people just watched him suck so bad on Monday Night Football. It's really hard for you to imagine people running like stacks. It was like it, with him. it wasn't just him sucking. It was that offensive line was terrible. Imagine playing him over Mason Rudolph. The oh. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Imagine not having James Conner, Jalen Samuels lineups like Michael Leone and just binking another 70K in showdown. Imagine imagine not being good enough to do that. That oh. was the most tilting. 
freaking dude throws like five yard passes. The Rudolph gets one throw over twenty yards, hits it for a touchdown. I had I had uh I had jail no, no one cares. No one cares. Okay. <laughs> I, I needed I needed I needed John Ross to score a touchdown for a bank and obviously he didn't. Russell. John Ross not gonna be playing for a few weeks. This uh I mean if you had to stack Andy Dalton, would it be which wide receiver would it be with, Davis? Boyd. It's very obviously Boyd. What? Boyd's gonna get Boyd's gonna get all of those easy uh like the tight end looks, the ones that everyone says that the Cardinals can't defend. He's gonna get all of those short to intermediate targets. Um he likely is gonna be the beneficiary of John Ross's absence for big targets. And, and I like I mean Tyler Eifert's just gonna score three touchdowns. Like I we should just we should just like stop our be getting mad about it and just like let it happen that Tyler Eifert is gonna score a lot thing, of like, it's just I was gonna, gonna do happen. this the same thing as last week where I'm like, no, he's a 50% player, yeah. you know, with Uzoma. And then Ross gets hurt, <laughs> and it's completely offset. There's going to be more targets going his way, and I don't care. I can't play him. I can't do it. Can't do it. <laughs> it's, he's, think... He is – okay, Tyler Eifert is a worse play than Will Disley for sure. All right. Uh, Carson Wentz, Tuttle. You like – like as far as DraftKings against the Jets, mm-hmm. is he a safe – like who's the safest option for you this week? Yeah, I kind of had – I have the cash game tags. My early glance – again, this is Wednesday. My early thought is you're either playing Wentz or Watson in cash. Those are the two quarterbacks I have it, it tagged as cash game quarterbacks right now. We mentioned Cincinnati game. Um, I like those quarterbacks for tournaments. Um, could, it, could could we have, like, the narrative, the the Vikings actually pass this week narrative? Could that be a thing? Yeah. At – at New York, I mean, uh, I, I feel like to do it. I, I feel like they're going to try at least after that. Uh, like Cousins, Dalton, Ryan, these are guys that have struggled, but they're, I mean, they're due for good bounce back week. It's, it's just a matter of who you're wanting to target. Uh, Davis, who are some GPP takes? Uh, my biggest GPP take is the Dallas Cowboys are going to stop running on first down and remember to score points again, and that Aaron Rodgers is super stackable without Devonta Adams again because that's going to give you access to playing Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, and Dalvin Cook in your game stack lineup. So my my biggest position is going to be uh, Green Bay and Dallas stacks with Rodgers, Prescott, bring backs with the other wide receivers on the opposing team. Dak also gets back um, Gallup. He, oh, not clear. He he practiced on Wednesday again, and so we're recording this early, so we don't actually know. But Davis, it, it Davis, looks good. Davis, injury reports don't matter. They don't matter to Mike we, Evans. We that Mike Evans week. don't care. Uh, Chris Godwin, you mean? No, this the whole argument that this started about was like five years ago, and it was about Mike Evans being doubtful in Week One, and I wrote him up in my column, and he ended oh, up I not do playing. That. I, yeah. I, I do remember that. This is where this whole argue, like <laughs> ridiculous argument started, and I was just like, "Guys, you were on the injury report. It doesn't matter. The end is it's fine. It doesn't matter." And he didn't play. He's gonna beast. <laughs> you, you didn't even care when he went to like from questionable, questionable to doubtful. You're like, no big deal. Like, no NBD, bro. <laughs> the, the problem is, I, I think uh, going back to your take, Zeke's just gonna run. I mean, they're they're just gonna do it again. They're not smart enough, and the the match. No, but here's the thing: they were it. they were smart for three games. So what? I I this is my take. I think Kellen Moore got scared. I think he looked over at Sean Payton and the Saints, and I think he I think he just like froze basically, and was like, I don't want to get boat raced. And, and I think that some self reflection over the course of the week is gonna help that. At least I'm I'm really <laughs> praying because I can't I can't live in a world where I get that that cock tease from Dallas for three weeks and then they turn back to being horrible. I the, can't. the the matchup's the problem though. Green Bay's been so bad against the run. Davis's strategy for GPPs this week is hope Kellen Moore has been doing <laughs> meditation <laughs> on his headspace app and that everything will work out. <laughs> we just got a we just got a funnel defense take from Tuttle. It's been a couple of years since we've had one of those on the show. It's definitely a thing though for the for the the Packers. They're so bad against the run. Um. All right. Let's uh, put together a DraftKings lineup. Tuttle with his coffee. This is such a stark contrast from two weeks ago. <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to stay chill. I got some. I got to write up the uh, the Thursday night football game after this. So. There you go. All right. Uh, give us a play, Tuttle. 
Um, let us go with Wednesday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really? It's, like, Wednesday. it's Wednesday. It's you Wednesday. Got to pick guys. one one person. Remember, we're playing this lineup in cash, so just pick <laughs> the safest play. This is a cash lineup. He burned me last week, so I'm not going to play him. So I'm not going to mention that guy. Um, I actually oh like the Matt, I, I like I like the Matt Ryan. <laughs> I, I like the Matt Ryan take we had here. So I'm, I'm going right. to go. I'm doing I'm doing the two for one. I'm taking Julio and Matt, and you guys can suck it. <laughs> Pretty good. All right, um, Davis. Well, has anyone mentioned that uh, Will Fuller might be a good GPP play this week? Nope. Like, has anyone, has anyone on any website did, covered that that he did might he be good? He barely miss a seventy-five yard touchdown last week. <laughs> That's what I was just kidding. People are anyone... wrecking him for cash this week. Well, I, I played him last week in tournaments, and it was not fun. Never. I mean, I like every every week, every week in the daily roto optimizer. I'm just like, all right, plus fifty boost to Will Fuller because if if he ever if he ever smashes and I don't have him, I'm gonna I'm gonna absolutely lose it. So we're not going to do that clearly because we're not chalk talky. So we're playing one Mr. Kiki Cutie with Kenny Stills questionable with a hamstring injury. Oh, that's great. Remember, that, play this, that, play this I, lineup in cash. I think that's a good troll tournament move for sure. It's, yeah. Although, it feels like it's either Kiki or uh, Duke Johnson this week. <laughs> yeah. Just, just to troll the man. Oh, the Duke Johnson troll would be, that would be just perfect because no one sets that rule up when they're doing their optimizing stuff now. All right. Wow. Um, okay, uh, Peter? All right. Uh, I'm going to continue to save us some money. I'm going to beat Davis to this one. I'm surprised he didn't do this, but he had to get the bring back. I'm going to get Keyshawn Johnson in here. Oh, it's lit! It's lit! You would get back to your brand. I mean, yeah. I mean, I want all my Kyler exposure through the $3,500 wide receiver. Through, through the horizontal raid? <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, if Keyshawn Johnson plays that Christian Kirk role and this is the week that Arizona finally scores points, like he, like he could really go nuts. Now we don't have any confirmation that he's playing that role for sure, but that would, my guess would be is that Sherfield plays the bird role and Keyshawn slots into Kirk's role. Well, one, one little bit of confirmation we might have is that they've just said Isabella isn't playing in the slot. He's playing outside. So right. who does basically that mean? means. Which basically means he's not going to be playing. He's not that playing. Much. Right, right. And well, I mean, look, they've done weird stuff with their wide receivers every week, so they could just bench Sherfield and play Isabella if they wanted to. That's a guys, thing. Did you guys know uh, Andy Isabella's fast? <laughs> per, per the data, he's rather quick. Yeah. So, Chris McCaffrey, I feel like people still are not going to play him. I mean – you would be very incorrect about that. He is going to be the most owned player this week, I think, almost for sure. We don't have the uh, the clear cut Eckler with no Melvin value anymore. And as we've we've already talked about, what four cheap wide receivers now under four thousand who we think are going to be plays. So it's just it's just going to let people jam CMC in. And all these guys, all these guys are like Trey Quinn and Paul Richardson from last week, except they don't play for Washington. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to pick Dalvin Cook then because we can spend on all our running backs now. Yeah, I mean, this is why this is why the cheap wide receivers are so important this week. Right now, Dalvin Cook is uh, higher owned than Chris McCaffrey. That kind of will def- that's there's no way. That feels crazy. Who would who would do that? I mean, people, people didn't play Christian McCaffrey last week in cash. In I heard, I heard this one dude, I knew this one dude in cash who played the Bills defense and Trey Quinn and still made money. I don't know. That guy was, it seemed weird that that would happen, but it happened. Oh, Trey Quinn, he teases so hard with that long target at the very beginning. We knew, we thought it was going to be just an amazing game and it was just sad. He, Sammy Watkins, and Keenan Allen combined for less than 20 DraftKings points. Right, Good times. Guy. All right. Uh, we got Chris McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook. We need a tight end, a flex, and a defense. Is it me? So, oh. over, uh, no, it's actually Davis. Oh. Did I have, I have a truly, truly terrible tight end take. Does it, does anyone, does anyone want it? Who, it wa- who wants like the, your, your Kiki take? 
Oh man, what about what about some Ben Watson returning from suspension oh, against Washington? Oh, wow, that's oh, the grossest thing I've ever heard on this show. <laughs> I, I thought we were gonna get a Jordan Aikens take. Oh no, come on, dude, that was reasonable. Jordan Aikens is re- Ben Watson. Ben Watson legit might not see a target. And I, I thought we were gonna. I I typed in Watson's name, thinking that I would see a twenty five hundred dollar. Yeah, no, he's thirty seven hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, think about the Sklansky bucks for the Peon though. He's not going to be owned. He's point zero one percent owned. The we don't have like the the Alpha Silva that just like vetoes those bad picks anymore. So we just no. To- we can we can do. Let's uh let's just let's just like let's succumb to it and let's just play Tyler Eifert. Let's let's get the flow chart. So because we get and if we play Eifert, we can play this in cash, of course. Yeah, this is <laughs> definitely. I think I, actually I think Watson's probably a better cash. Tight end. But I like he's definitely one of like the few tight ends that's in play for cash, I think. Alright. Uh over Zets, you got anything? Well, if I was more constrained on salary, what I wanted to do in the flex for this sick cash game lineup is go full game stack, fade Hooper, and get my boy Calvin Ridley, because the big bounce back game is coming this week. But I feel like that's a little too much salary to leave on the table. So well, because well, we're playing Washington defense, right? That's locked in. <laughs> Washington. Why don't we let's get uh, Marquise Brown in the flex? Dude, we're buying low. We're buying low on the air yards model. I mean, I kind of just like Ridley and eating salary. Okay. Yep. I, I I want Ridley. I just you know for this cash game lineup, uh, I just thought I might be putting in yeah, a little Rid- too much Ridley, volatility. Yeah, Ridley, 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 a little listeners. safer. Ridley, a little safer <laughs> for cash, I think. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> let's move on to running backs. Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook for cash, one and two. If you didn't play Wayne Gallman in cash last week, I said I sent you a friend invite on DraftKings. I just need everyone to know that. <laughs> did you actually? Please send yes. it. I scrolled through my head ads and I sent invites to people who didn't play him. Oh my! It's God. like it was the easiest play of the of like I can't I don't remember an easier play. And he was legit like forty percent in some cash games, like in some double ups. That's an awful move right there. But there weren't a lot of ways to go bad last week at running back. For net. Um, yeah, um, no, I mean some of us not played playing. Marlon Mack. <laughs> Eric, Eric Bimefor, he he won two hundred thousand dollars with Mac in his GPP lineup. Well, I didn't. Eric, 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 dude, he's got he he was the one who did all the bring back research. Like it, it you just got to do it. If you're not doing it, you are really giving up EV. He also was uh, on Chris Godwin last week, or really the whole, whole true week. alpha. So all that paid off. All that best ball research paid off for the fellow. Good job by him. All right. Um, so third running back. Dude, I don't, I do not have an answer. It, it is, it's, impo- it's, it feels it's impossible. easy on FanDuel. It's easy on FanDuel. David right. Johnson. David, David Johnson. Well, David oh, yeah. Johnson would, is who I would pick also on DraftKings as well, but it's not, it's not easy. No, uh, David Johnson's way too cheap on FanDuel. He's, yeah, he's tougher on, on DraftKings. On DraftKings, I think you're kind of – well, I don't think you're stuck, but more in that 6K or lower range, which leaves you like uh, Aaron Jones is probably underpriced on DraftKings. Yeah, but here's the thing. I Like, can you even get him in there? Like, I, I feel like the constraints are hard enough in cash that I, I don't know if it makes a ton of sense. Like, I, like I, I don't know if you'll have the ability to spend 6000 in in the flex. What about David Montgomery? Fifty two hundred. Yeah, I, this is going to be the first time I've ever touted David Montgomery. Oh, whoa! He's, he legit sucks. He's bad. He's like he's not good. But Mike Davis was inactive last week. He got twenty one rushes to Tariq Cohen's five. He got five targets, the same as Tariq Cohen. Oakland's really bad. They're going to be super conservative, super ground heavy with Chase Daniel at quarterback, even more conservative and even more ground heavy than with Trubisky at quarterback. So if you ever wanted to play David Montgomery in cash, this is probably the week to do it. I don't know. They finally have a quarterback that can throw. <laughs> even Dude, if what if they, what far. if they did a bunch, what if they did a bunch of the push passes and he got just like five free points? That's it. That's in play. That's definitely in play. Yo, I've got, I've got the, uh, 
the the Chase Daniel take. Uh, I think it was Thanksgiving. Was he? He was on the Thanksgiving slate. I think last year he was. He started, and him and the Tariq Cohen connection were on fire that game. Um, well, they're also. There, well, there's a scenario where James Conner doesn't play. He's listed as questionable right now. I don't believe that he practiced on Wednesday with that knee that he banged against the turf. Jalen Samuels would be 90% owned if James Conner was inactive. No, he would not be 90% owned. He should be 100% owned. He, he would be heavily owned, but there's so many, there's so many running back options this week. He should, like, if I Makes would, sense. I would maybe lock him. He's a better play this week than Gallman was last week if James Conner is inactive. Mixon against Arizona, Alvin Kamara against Tampa Bay. Of course, Tampa Bay, I don't know if this run defense is legit, uh, but Kamara, you think it is, Tuttle? Yeah. But I, I also think you'll see teams like what the Rams did last week and just start throwing to the running backs instead of using them as, as rushers and just use them as pass catchers. Gurley saw, what, 11 targets last week, I think it was. Yeah. Um, it, Mixon is the other guy on on DraftKings though, because he's cheap. I I I would like to play Mixon and Cash more than I would like to play Montgomery or Aaron Jones. Let's, let, well, let's get the the Packers take. So let's say Jamal Williams is inactive, which I, it's probably a safe bet that the dude who got yeah. stretchered off eight days ago is inactive. Is is Matt Lafleur? Is he just gonna donk off everyone with Dexter Williams? Is this gonna happen? See, I, I don't. My take is I don't think he actually likes Dexter Williams. Just but he watching. also doesn't really like Aaron Jones. So. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but if you were on the team pre, I, I grinded a few preseason slates, and um, he was giving what? Who's the Trey, uh, Trey Carson, Carson from A and M? He was giving giving him a lot of run. I remember following practice reports over the preseason, and Dexter Williams was consistently screwing up in in practice on scripted plays, and that was a big thing. I don't think he likes Dexter Williams. I, I, I think he would be. If Dexter Williams, if Jamal Williams doesn't play, which seems most likely, I think you're probably looking at like a 70-30 split. <laughs> Bro. That's I, a I lot of Aaron Jones. That is a lot of Aaron Jones. That's a lot of Aaron Jones. If they, if it's 70-30, I will be jamming Aaron Jones. But Mixon last week randomly shot up to a pretty crazy split too, at least touch-wise. I mean, Geo didn't come in until garbage time, until like it, two Cause minutes. Because Geo is – He's just Geo, bro. Like it's like this coaching staff does not want to play him. They they want to get Mixon out there. Uh, Shout out to a friend of the show, TJ, who was tilting Geo <laughs> <laughs> getting into the game during that showdown slate. Yeah, it, it kind of uh, have to feel bad for him, especially after he binked the. Yeah, uh, you got to feel bad for the guy that wins two hundred fifty grand every week. Two fifty, yeah. And the all right, um, last guy I want to talk about as far as the high price guy, Zeke. What would you like us to talk about with him? Funnel like, defense, bro. Do you like him? Like as a tournament play? If everyone's playing Chris McCaffrey and Dalvin Cook. I mean, he's just, he's, he's probably a better play than Dalvin Cook is. No, Pollard, P- Pollard got one touch last week. In, right. in competitive games, Pollard's not going to play at all. Also, the team has apparently now rededicated themselves to running him on first down as opposed to scoring points. So that's good for his fantasy value. He got a lot of touches. Last Remember how fun it was when the Cowboys were just like running play action and doing like cool stuff, and then they just decided to run on first down a lot. They might, and they, they deci- might, and they decided, and they decided play action was was not for them. It might come back to that. So depressing, bro. <sighs> All right, and the other guy I want to talk about is Ronald Jones. Everyone is getting all. This, this is Overzets. Let him go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it, buddy. I'm just getting in the crossfire here. This is my buddy Pat. I mean, him and Ben Gretsch are just obsessed oh. with this guy. I think Rojo has put out a restraining order on these two at this point. But I mean, until we see like a, a continual meaningful shift in him getting targets, you know, he's still split with Barber. He's still you know, losing some pass work to Dare. So he's going to be super volatile. I mean, you can, you can sprinkle. As long as Tampa Bay is winning by two touchdowns on their opponents <laughs> yeah. on the road. He, he's a, he's a watch the tape guy, right? Because he had, I hear everyone, he had an awesome 50 yard run that got called back by a hold. Yeah. Another 24 yard run that got 
called back. He, he looks good. Yeah, he looks great. <laughs> People forget he's a former track star. <laughs> but it still has awkward hands. All right. I, I am surprised, though. RG only has him at a 1% ownership right now. I would have thought he would have been a little buzzier than that. Yeah. I mean, I I guess it's a tough matchup, and people I, hopefully people understand that he's just not going to he's just not going to get like the bulk of the carries. I doubt they're going to be up, you know, like they were last last week was a perfect storm. Yeah, I mean, he's just not getting. So you're you're taking a guy that's not only in a running back by committee for just carries and touches, but also a guy that's just not going to get there down or pass, any passing work. Well, you just asked yourself, would I be excited to play Royce Freeman if uh, Theo <laughs> Riddick was also getting three or four of those targets? And that's what Ronald yeah. Jones is. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, why Two are... touchdowns this week. I know. We just guaranteed it. <laughs> wide receiver. You have to pick one cheap wide receiver. Keyshawn or Tate, Tuttle. Who is it? Tate. We know his role. And it's going to increase probably. Hey, and he looks good out there. <laughs> <laughs> Big body wide receiver. If you're, Love grinding it. The, if you're grinding the tape, he looks good out there. Uh, I'm I'm going with Keyshawn because I read a book about the air raid in the off season. All right, Davis. I also read a book about the air raid in the off season, <laughs> and I will also be taking Keyshawn Johnson. <laughs> All right. Um, speaking of Keyshawn, how chalky is Larry Fitzgerald going to be? On FanDuel, he is he'll be chalk, yeah. FanDuel, he'll be chalkier than, than DraftKings, for sure. I mean, they if they're going to throw the ball 40 times, 50 times, they, they just don't have a lot of targets outside of David Johnson and, and Fitz. So, Davis, thoughts there? I mean, I think these guys are just, like, Keyshawn Johnson is such a good play. They're going to throw 45 times. Keyshawn Johnson is going to play in the oh, slot. No, I know. We're talking about Fitzgerald, though. Nah. <laughs> I'd rather, he's too expensive, right? Like, he, you actually got to pay for him. He's 6K. Yeah, like, you actually got, you actually have to pay for, like, an offense that, like, low-key S- blows butt. Silva, Silva would do it. Silva I mean, I'm, obviously, I'm going to have Fitzgerald. I'm not going to play him in cash, but, like, he's going to be in my turn. I, I'm not... Look, dude, I'm not going to be the guy <laughs> that plays Kyler Murray for four weeks and then they play the Bengals and I'm like, nah, son. No. Like, that's the guy you want to be, baby. <laughs> if if Kyler Murray goes the entire year without a 400-yard and three-touchdown game, I'm just going to lose. And that's okay. It's okay to lose. All right. Recency bias as far as Keenan Allen. How is that going to affect if you want to uh, to play him this week, Peter? Uh, yeah, it looks like people aren't scared off. We got him at 28% right now. Uh, he's going to get a ton of targets. He's, he's a good player. Is he? Is he, Peter? He is. Is he going to get a ton of targets? Let me pull out the, uh, the Broncos are uh, a pass funnel. We're going to have Chris Harris (laughs) on this side of the field. Um, yeah, no, he's, he's going to get a lot. I mean, he was really close to a big game last week. He had that touchdown called back. Didn't he fall down at the one uh, on one play too? So oh, that touchdown that got called back. Um, he he tweeted out and said he got pulled down, but it sure looked like it was offensive pass interference. But it wasn't even going to matter. But that nothing was nothing matters. Defenses. Uh, that was that was definitely tilting. Davis, what are your thoughts? All on All that matters on, is the air raid on your boy Keenan Allen. Probably not going to be as much in my player pool this week. Probably. Whatever. I got, you know, I'll just kind of match his ownership. I, I don't think I feel real comfortable taking a stance. The guys, the guys who I want to have a lot of are, um, Mike Evans, Michael Thomas, Tyler Boyd, Smith Schuster. So just like guys who are a little bit cheaper. Smith Schuster? Yeah. Yeah. Can't do it. Gross. Um, imagine, 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 imagine a world where I finally stopped playing Smith Schuster. Like, and he goes off. I get this is another situation where I would be the the I would rather I would rather pay the tax the rest of the year of him sucking than not bink when he goes off for thirty five DraftKings points. Like I would be too miserable. 
I mean, this was the same defense that uh, gave up the Tuttle's terrible take to another slot receiver here. So perhaps we have a Baltimore slot receiver flow chart funnel situation right here. What do you say, Tuttle? <laughs> I say we need a guy that's going to throw the ball like more than two yards. <laughs> so not Kyler Murray. <laughs> not not him. Okay. Nor nor Mason Rudolph. All right, uh, New Hopkins this week. It feels like after the past two weeks, people are going to be off of him. Uh, no, which I, I don't think I don't think they will though. You think he'll still be very highly owned? Bring up the ownership. What do we got? Eleven percent. He'll he'll funnel some of that Keenan Allen. As the as the week progresses, I think those two will even out, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Hopkins higher owned. Hopkins will be high. I'll, I'll state that right now. Hopkins will be higher owned than Keenan Allen. All right. Um, it, does he not have, have a problem with Hopkins this week? It seems like he's in a good spot. He's a good player. All right. Who are some other good plays this week, Tuttle? Um, Thielen is okay. So you, so you're riding the narrative. I mean, this is. It's a little bit of a narrative. It's also he's, the problem is he's done, like, he's done well with limited volume. So if you do get the game where you actually get a spike in volume, then. The, the potential there is there for a, a monster game. Uh, we talked about the other Bengals receivers, uh, Tyler Boyd. I'll be interested to see how that ownership shakes out um, in cash games, specifically on DraftKings, because I feel like people aren't going to be playing both Tate and Boyd. Right. So uh, we, we that's, the, have... that's the only way you make the Tate chalk work is to do game stacks. Like it, like set the rule where if Golden Tate exactly won Andy Dalton, Kyler Murray, and then in your Andy Dalton rule, you include minimum two Tate, Eifert, Boyd. Davis, uh, you had the last name right. Uh, first, first name, name was, wrong. This, it's a, a common problem of yours. Like the, uh, what the, can you do? like the angels pitcher. Who is that? I'm trying to buy Bitcoin right now and my Google authenticator <laughs> app is not working. So I'm a little shook. Davis, so I, I thought we have you dollar cost averaging in now. You're making impulse emotional buys <laughs> during Swolecast <laughs> recordings. I just one of my, one of my buddies just texted great. me that he, one of my buddies just texted me that he made a buy, but I got the new iPhone and my Google authenticator app is not letting me sign in. So I don't have access to Why don't you my buy Coinbase something account? with some real value right now? <laughs> <laughs> I never got a man's coin. WTF. All right. Hey, just, uh, maybe don't. Publish the uh, the Tuttle's leverage article this week. Send it right to me, and then uh, we'll give you these <laughs> All right, there we go. All right. <laughs> uh, so Davis is it basically he, he recommended Golden Tate just now. So Golden Tate's only forty five hundred. Yeah, FanDuel. Golden Tate minimum salary on Fanduel. My my bad, everyone. That my that bad. is going to be an issue. I'm I'm already tilting when we're actually going to have you, a you, decent you play. Cl- you clearly just, you clearly just, if you're playing MME on FanDuel, you clearly just do not include him in your player pool, right? I don't think he's going to be like crazy high owned though, is the thing. This, this isn't I don't the think spot. he's going to be high owned. No, at all. It, this isn't the spot for it. And you have Marquise, uh, Marquise. Are people going to well. play him in cash? Like I don't have a sense of how, what people do with that on FanDuel. Marquise is only 5,400. Like we, Autumn who makes the prices there? <laughs> well, that's what I'm tilting is like. Is it the this, same person that designed their version of Showdown? <laughs> they 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 used to so that this is how they used to treat. It. They they've gone come for full circle. They are back to where anybody who is injured for a week or is suspended just goes immediately to minimum price, and then they're not quick enough to adapt to where. You know, they bring them back to full price. And so it, it hasn't hurt us. Obviously, didn't hurt us with Melvin Gordon last week. It's not going to hurt us with, with Golden Tate this week. But it's going to happen this this season where, uh, you know, Chris Herndon next week's going to be 4K or something crazy, and they're not going to adapt to it. Yeah, I mean, you have Golden Tate at 4,500. You've got – what's Fitz, like 5,800 on there? Yeah, yeah. Those two are going to be – Brown, Brown and, and Fitz are going to be the two heaviest owned receivers. So if you just do like a basic defense, like a just a just a basic defense, and you put Lamar and then two studs and David Johnson, then that still gives you sixty five hundred left for a wide receiver and tight end. Like yeah. I mean, and the and the highest priced tight end on Fanduel is Austin Hooper at sixty seven hundred. Yeah. So you could easily play. Uh, I mean, you. Obviously, play Andrews if you want to pair him with Lamar Jackson, and that would give you 
6,900 for nice. a wide receiver. Uh, and guess who's 6,900 on FanDuel? Adam Thielen. Pro- probably Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> Adam Thielen. I just solved everybody's problem, everybody's issue on FanDuel. We don't even have to cover that lineup. All right, uh, more wide receivers, though, maybe overlooked wide receivers. I've seen some love for Jamison Crowder. I was actually uh, Pete's overlooked over Zets wide receiver of the week. Speaking of Jamison Crowder, what about Robbie Anderson with Sam? I don't have a spleen. Darnold potentially coming back this week. Darnold averaging or uh, Robbie averaging six targets a game, still getting those high leverage targets deep down the field, and that Eagles secondary, even though they don't matter, is pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, other guys that uh, you like, Davis, if you could just, like, focus just for one second. Remember that one time in Fantasy Insiders where I made you put your phone <laughs> away? I'm about to do that again. Just trying to buy some BTC, dude. I'm going to tell Dink. He's gonna get, he's so gonna get here, here, here I think is actually one of the biggest things of the week. The Eagles have the number one highest team total. They are playing an at, like, just a team that is abjectly horrible. None of these guys are going to be owned. Alshon Jeffrey's not going to be owned. If Deshaun Jackson is active, he won't be owned. Deshaun Jackson is inactive. Nelson Aguilar won't be owned. Uh, I assume, I guess on FanDuel, Zach Ertz is going to be owned, but people will play Evan Ingram, people will play Waller, people will play Andrews, Hooper on DraftKings instead. Like, I, and I don't even want to play him. They have a 29 total and I'm like, dude, these guys suck. I don't want to play fat Alshon Jeffrey. But I, I think, I think the, the, like the, the basic math of the team total would suggest they're all pretty good plays. And Wentz is a good game, like a good stack too. All right. Um, shout out to Matt Harmon, reception perception. I think this is his week for Curtis Samuel. I think this is uh, Curtis Samuel against the Jags. This is when Matt can tell everyone he was right about Curtis Samuel being the wide receiver one. I was I was getting excited. I thought you were going to tout Kelvin Harmon there for a second. <laughs> no, but they do have the same last name. Why Why Curtis Samuel and why not DJ Moore? Uh, Curtis Samuel is on the buy low air yards model. Have you heard, seen? Heard have, of it? Have you heard of it? <laughs> I have heard of it. It did pretty However, good. However, my 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 issue with this would be is DJ Moore better. <laughs> that that like that's your but that's what I'm saying. I mean, but, DJ Moore is just a better player, and he Davis, gets like he gets the way better looks too. Kyle Allen seems to not like DJ Moore that much. It depends here's on the, if, here's the thing. Here's the thing Kyle, that people do. If Kyle football, Allen reflects on it, like himself. There's no one no, Kyle Allen doesn't need to reflect, bro. He's doing he's doing the very best he can. Kellen Moore needs he needs to be in his headspace app. <laughs> Curtis Samuel is uh forty five is seven hundred cheaper than DJ Moore. Curtis Samuel for his career is just gonna be this he's gonna he's gonna be this guy. He just is gonna get a lot of inefficient targets because like the Curtis Samuel's not that good. He's not that good at getting open. He's not that physical. He's not that fast. He's not that big. So this is just going to be his career. You don't think like Curtis I think Samuel's he's a five. Fast? I think what is he like a four 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 yeah. five? He's not he's not as fast as DJ Moore. He had a twenty one percent target share last week versus DJ Moore's fifteen. Um, I mean also <laughs> another thing fifty four percent of the market another, yards. Another thing that another thing that this team is doing is they're they're just really grossing games up. They are not trying to get they're, like they're not really trying to do anything crazy with Kyle Allen. They're not running you know the full offense that they had designed in the preseason with Cam Newton, obviously, which they shouldn't, and it's working for them. So I don't think that they're planning on changing it either. Minshew, Shark, Curtis Samuel, championship. Minshew Dude. magic. DJ DJ Shark is just like he's like the new Calvin Johnson. He just is so big, and he just did you see the touchdown that got called back? That was like the most like it was such a good play. It should not have been called back. Like Gardner fitting the touchdown through like the tightest window. And sh- oh, so right, David, we, just, we, we just got the DJ Shark Calvin yeah. Johnson comparison. I was gonna say, so you're gonna admit that DJ Moore isn't even the best DJ in this game. No, and also Curtis Samuel's fast. I just am tilting because I need DJ Moore to be better in my life. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to read three tweets here. 
from a Ooh, from story time. I'm going to read three tweets from a, from a player that is going to be owned this week. You try to guess that player. Okay. I fed this B up on some loud. We smoked half of the blunt, then I hit the B, and when I took her home, I let her keep the blunt, and now I'm mad. So that's tweet number one. Tweet number two. This has got to be Aaron Jones. I feel like this is like dangerous told, territory. Told like, baby girl I only give head if she swallow children. <laughs> and number three, I wonder if Iowa females got that drip, drip, drop, wet, wet, insert uh, word for vagina. Are these I, past tweets or something? The, the, these are past tweets. I think oh, the, the, like, the, the drip, drip, drop, wet, wet has to give it away. Come on. The Iowa uh, thing, I feel oh, like. Oh, Geronimo, Geronimo Allison. <laughs> yeah, Geronimo yeah. Allison yeah. I, 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 it's so, oh, my, my brain is so broken that I remember that he had this sequence of horrible <laughs> tweets. I uh, like how you waited till the end to censor yourself. You're yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Tweet I mean, number two should have uh, should have had some sense. <laughs> That's Simon, not a bad word. That's not a bad word. <laughs> Simon is is cursing you right now. <laughs> All right. Uh, I thought my favorite part was Peter. Story time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those are the bedtime stories I like to get. <laughs> All right. But no, takes on Geronimo, takes on Packers passing game. Yeah, well, I mean, Mar- Marquez Valdez scaling, bro. That's a slam dunk. What's the situation with Devonte? What do he's you think gonna, it's going to be? Gonna he's, he's not going to play. It sounds he's, like. Okay. He's going to the theaters to see Ad Astra with his craft sl- slices. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if he doesn't play, you've got um MBS at 5600, Allison at 5k. We thought we knew who the alpha was there. Um Geronimo's, Geronimo has made some alpha catches this year. Right, that's what I'm saying. And now Geronimo's back, so oh. what would drip drip drip? <laughs> drip drip drip. Tuttle, give us the give us the Wisconsin take. I mean, Val- Valdez is your home run guy for sure. Um, well, isn't he more likely to play Adams' position, and then Allison plays like Allison plays Allison the slot, slot yeah. and then and then Lazard, Shepard, or Kumaro plays in MBS's spot? Yep. Yeah, but Valdez has the speed too. He's the guy that's gonna. Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah, but Valdez. So you're not playing either of these guys in cash games. Is the take? And, oh man, I don't know. Thank you. And, and Valdez, <laughs> I, I hey, I've actually seen them touted as cash game players. I've been looking. I've been waiting to play MVS in cash about as long as I waited to play I've Jeff seen, I've, seen, cash. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. But oh, MV, yeah, MVS in tournaments for sure. This is uh, this is when Jake Kumro comes back and everyone knows his name after this week. When when we logged in to do the stream today, I actually thought we were podcasting with Jake Kumaro over there, but it was it ended up being just Davis. Just Davis. <laughs> Here's the thing: I'm about as fast as Jake Kumaro. <laughs> Jake, yeah, Jake Jake Kumaro being touted in fantasy is really just an example of people being so bad and not being able to help themselves. Jake Kumaro uh, played at University of Wisconsin Whitewater, wasn't as good as Jeff yeah, Janis was. Ran Here we go. A, Here we ran go. Story a 4-6, uh, yeah, is sub, is sub 50th percentile in all, in, in everything, in everything. And, and he is 28 years old. The breakout is not happening, bro. Jake Kumaro is not breaking out. Give it up, bro. My, Jake my, pa- my parents fell in love at UW Whitewater. There you go. Drip, drip, drip. <laughs> oh, God. No. 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 We can. We can cut that one. Nope. 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 Oh, oh boy. Pass the craft cheese slices. I, oh, oh man. <laughs> You've even switched drinks. Oh. You're so tilted right uh, now. I think, I think Oof. if Devontae Adams is truly not playing, then, um, I want to play a guy that's played basketball before. He, he, dude, he ran so many routes last week. Yeah. He ran, was it 30? He dropped like five catches, but he, he ran a lot of routes. He ran 38, 38 routes last week, Jimmy Graham did. All right, uh, speaking of tight ends, we'll talk about those in a second. Let's build us a FanDuel lineup real quick. How do you spell that? What's this? What, does someone want to send me um, a deposit code so I can create an account? It's, uh, it's dual, D-U-E-L. <laughs> oh, all right, cool. Like you're dueling somebody. Okay, uh, oh. Peter, how many... 
I'm going to give you first first crack at it and uh, make sure you you can have a twofer right now. Wow, that's the alpha play I get my stack. Yeah, you get you whatever you want. You get a twofer. He's going to get the twofer and he's not even going to take Kyler, dude. Cut. Dude, Kyler's so dust. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm going, I'm, go, I'm going all in on Kyler this game. Oh, Peter, dude, dude this it. is I'm I'm so upset. Uh, I've been hurt. Um, <laughs> all right, let's do, uh, let's do our, our under owned, uh, Carson Wentz to, uh, Zach Ertz here. All right. <laughs> it hurts so good. Dude, Peter is so shook. No, just so, it turned him to some cash donkey. I'm going to, I'm going to listen to his podcast tonight and like he, <laughs> he and his, he and his co-manager are going to be like, dude, should we even bid $1 on Keyshawn Johnson? I Come on. So you dust, don't think bro. we drafted Keyshawn in the 16th year, <laughs> you're an idiot. We drafted every single Cardinals receiver. I'm pretty sure we had some Trent Sherfield mixed in there, dude. <laughs> the air raid was going to change my life. <laughs> <sighs> I read a book yeah. about the air raid. It was the most expensive book of my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the, that's what it says on my tombstone. <laughs> Peter, you need to like just consult with the mans tonight. You gotta get you gotta get back some of the swagger that Kyler has lost you. you gotta, we we need that that swagger back. All right, uh, Tuttle, Carson Wentz, Zach Ertz, who you got? Bringing it back. Good old Robbie Anderson. Plus, he has an awesome headshot, so he makes your lineups look cool with that hairdo. Yeah. Looks like the guy from what was that show? Um, yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. It was on NBC. Guy looked like that. It was dated to Jamie? Was married, I think, to Jamie Presley. I don't. Know. Ed. It's like a first name. Come on, Peter. <laughs> he, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I don't. I don't know. What I'm was drawing, that I'm show? Ah, jeez. Nobody knows what you're talking about. I know. David. All right. Um, Simon, help me out here. Simon will know. Okay, uh, we've got Wentz, Ertz, Anderson, Davis. Mm, can I go? Can I just be Chalk Donkey with Marquise Brown? Sure. All right, we got a little bit of money to spend. I really, I really feel like Silva, just being like, uh, can I just, can we just take this one player I like? I don't know how much they cost. I just want to get him in there. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go with uh, – did we play David Johnson in the fan, in the DraftKings lineup? No. All right, so we'll play him in the FanDuel lineup. Old DJ. He he might get 20 targets this week. All right. Uh, Peter, back to you. I don't think we played Zeke, right? Let's just get him in. I, I don't have a feeling that Kellen Moore is listening to any headspace this week. Mm, all right. So then we've got sixty, about sixty four hundred left per player with a defense as part of that. Tuttle. I'm gonna go uh, <clears throat> David Montgomery. Ew. You like that? That was like if Kirk Cousins like got really sultry. You like that? Yeah, you <laughs> do, don't you? Yeah, put it in the flex. Well, actually, <laughs> if you paired him with the second highest defense, which I'm not sure why you would, uh, the Bears, 5K, you would have 8,400, which could get you Julio. You'd be 100 Julio. off from Hopkins if you did that. But all that to say, Davis, you can pick pretty much any receiver you want. Uh, well, then I guess that I'm going to take Amari Cooper because uh, – Kellen Moore is going to find himself. He is. All right. If you take Cooper. He's reading the Bhagavad Gita right now, and he's going to find his center. All right. If you take Cooper, then we got Patriots defense. Patriots, uh, their defense honestly might score 30 this week. I'm not going to play them, but they might score. I don't think Pat's D works. Or Oh, sorry. I had had Julio in there still. (laughs) Stupid. Stupid. Lineup's not bad. Yeah, this is a cash game lineup for sure. <laughs> Dude, this is clearly a cash game lineup. I like the uh, the Zeke Cooper combo without bringing anyone back from the Packers. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, tight ends. Obviously, 
Ertz is up there. We know his story. Playing against the Jets. We've talked about Tyler Eifert. Give us some other tight end plays, Davis. I mean, it's it's pretty thin this week at tight ends. Uh, I mean, Evan Ingram is the guy that I want to play. I don't think that he is going to project all that well because the matchup is so brutal. But I just think uh, out of all these, like out of all these guys, Waller and Waller and Ingram have the roles that I feel most secure. And I think people will probably play Greg Olson a little bit on FanDuel looking at this price, but. Uh, I think a, a reason why people might want to play Tyler Eifert is just because the position kind of sucks and, you know, the flow chart and he's cheap. But because there is no – I mean, under 4,000, I don't really see a good play at all. All right. Well, I mean, on on DK, you got Mark Andrews. I mean, at 4,800. So I don't think – I don't think he's – Bad. This foot this foot stuff does kind of weird me out with him though. It's just an injury report, bro. Doesn't matter. Dude, it literally, literally doesn't just catch a touchdown every game. Legit does not matter. Dude, it doesn't matter, obviously. I'll send I'll send you the tweet thread. All you right. won't? I bet you won't do that. No one sent me the <laughs> get a blog for no one sent me that last week, by the way. All right. Uh other tight ends that you like, Peter. I mean, I guess you could go with these old guys, uh, Olsen and Delaney Walker, I think are, are okay plays, but I agree. I think it's really gross, uh, this week. All right. Uh, Tuttle? You could throw like a Waller in there. You know, the Waller? guy that catches Jimmy all the Graham? balls. I mean, I think you said Foster Moreau wrong. Uh, no. Tuttle. <laughs> <laughs> I just picked him up in my dynasty league. Thank you very much. <laughs> Spark score. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, tight end. I think we listed about all of them. That's the goal, baby. Delaney Walker under 4K, but I think he only had like one catch last week. But uh, I don't know if you've heard of the air yards by a little model, but he's in it. He's, he's <laughs> is, is Delaney in the <laughs> – Yeah, he, he legitimately is. I mean, on DraftKings, I think you probably do just play Andrews, right? He's 4,800. Yeah. I think – well, cause then you can play, so you can play Keyshawn or Tate, whoever you want, right? You, you get that dude in there. I, and then, do you think people are gonna spend at wide receiver in cash? Like, Outside do you think people Tate? are gonna, do you think they're gonna try and get, like, Hopkins, Julio, or, or Allen? Maybe one of them, yeah. Also, we, hold on, can we reverse the show? We literally have not said Austin Eckler's name on this show, and he's $7,000. Tuttle said it. I was probably were, trying to buy some Bitcoin. Your Google Authenticator. Uh, <laughs> um, I was too worried about the works blood split, though. But I, so we, I, I messed around with this earlier in our stuff, and I gave him a 33% market share of the rush attempts and a 33% market share of the rushing touchdowns, which is a lot lower than it has been, obviously, for the first four weeks. And he still is rating as a value because they, dude, these are the healthy wide receivers for the Los Angeles Chargers. Keenan Allen. Jeremy Davis, Andre Patton, and they had to sign. I literally don't. I put him in the sheet earlier. I don't even remember his name. But their other, their third string tight end, Sean Colkin, went on injured reserve as well. It's so like I think Austin Eckler just is going to have to play because they have so few bodies. Yeah, you could see him playing, sl- even lining up in the slot, or he, they they ran a fair amount of packages with both him with and Tremaine Pope. Yeah, the and they just week. and they just sub Melvin Gordon into those. Yeah. Dude, I love, I love me, I love me some 21 personnel. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't, they didn't say anything about that in the air raid book. Makes me real Fra- Fraudulent 10 personnel, dude. Don't you know 21's <laughs> bigger than 10? We've got, and that's why I think that, that running backs are going to be just, there's so many running backs to play this week. So the wide receivers you got to hit on. All right. Speaking of time for Tuttle's terrible take. Well, you Story gotta give me a heads time. up, man. Bum, bum, bum. You, you didn't even give me a heads up. All right. You didn't even give him a heads up, dude. Tough scene. I mean, you know this coming at the end of the show. We're at, we're at the end of the show. It's Wednesday, man. Okay. It's, All right. Have what? we mentioned it's Wednesday? <laughs> While we're doing. Robbie we, Anderson. That's your title. T- <laughs> Look at Peter. He's. he's He's, he's so talking, offended. He's so offended. Did I, did I, take yours? I said it. It can't be that terrible. Come on, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly why I picked it. I literally was going through my head. Who did Peter mention on the show? 
God. I can't wait for the comments. They're like, Tuttle talks too much. Just uh, let Peter get in some more takes. <laughs> All right. Um, Davis, overview – or sorry, not overview. Uh, recap, final thoughts, anything to say? <sighs> Keyshawn Johnson, man, please score some points. <laughs> please. My family, my, my family is so sick. <laughs> Kellen Moore, I hope you thought about what you did. I hope you, I hope you thought. I hope you, you spent the whole week thinking. All right, Peter, you look like you're about to get a prop. So uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, I was just gonna I'll get my you, perfect pass copy. I'll let you do that. Um, <laughs> just been crying into this the whole past week. Mia Davis erected a shrine to Hal Mummy and uh, have paid our respects. You need some self reflection, Peter, and you need to hop back on the Kyler Murray. All right, maybe I will. Right. Dave, you're going to be in Boston this weekend. Uh, yeah. Maybe if you get sick of your wife, you head out to the burbs with me. Get that real drip, drip, drip. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Do it. Oh, man. There will be some uh, – I don't even know. Uh, okay, Tuttle. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, let's – all right, come on, guys. <laughs> Tuttle, we this need is a, a This is take. a family show. This is yeah, a family we need show. A terrible take. Oh, you came back to me for a different one? Damien Willis. All right. See, that's oh, my God, about. dude. That's what? what? That's <laughs> the worst player who's ever been touted in the history of this show. No, you said Ben Watson like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> At least he plays for the Patriots. Like, I can just be like, dude, anyone can blow up for the Patriots. <laughs> we'll probably Damien mention, Willis, baby. I bet. I bet 2% of the viewing audience oh. right now knows who he plays for, but it's the Cincinnati Bengals. I got one more. I got one more. All right. I'm going to make it worse. Okay. You ready for it? Yeah. Bobo Wilson. Dude, I mean, come. I mean, he's literally like wide receiver six. At least he's back. Bobo, Bobo Wilson. I, get ready for, get ready for the breakout game. Like what okay. team does he even play for? <laughs> he plays my, for uh... the Bucks. Yeah, he plays the, for the Bucks. He's, he, he's their, he's their punt returner. Also, little known fact, he is the smallest player in the NFL. Well, there you go. That's little, that's little known player. fact. He's now wide receiver three for yeah. the Bucks. That's, no, that's who no. Yeah. Justin, Justin Watson is, dude. He jumped over, uh, Perriman last week and Watson. Right, so Watson Justin. got, what, Justin Watson got how many snaps last week? I love how we didn't, we didn't even talk that, that about many, Chris Godwin. That many, too. Boba Wilson, 29 of 43 dropbacks, baby. How did he climb the depth chart with such short arms? Because <laughs> he's fast. He's we got this. Talk about Chris Chris Godwin. Oh, my gosh. Boba That's Wilson, like, guaranteed touchdown. Lock it in. That's how you know this show is different than the, uh, the edge, is that there is no mention of Chris Godwin after a 50-point performance. He's so last week, dude. Yeah, I don't know why you would play him over Bobo. <laughs> the show is My Name is Earl, by the way. So I was close. I said Ed. My name is Earl. Ed, what's and what's the actor's the guy's name? guy's name is Darnell. Okay. On the show. All right. That will do it. If you've made this far, thank you. We really appreciate you. In fact, here's what we're going to do. Give us Any a like. If you work at Coinbase support, please help. <laughs> <laughs> Give us it's a cool. like. And on the show, um, or uh, on the YouTube page, Give Say us your, something nice about Dave. No, 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 no. <laughs> Say something mean about Tuttle. No. Oh. No. Give us a Tuttle's terrible take. Give us a Tuttle's terrible take. Who would you have as your terrible take? And whoever the best terrible take, we get to dis- we get to decide what the terrible take is next week. And whoever wins that wins a the the very first Swolecast fanny pack. Wait, do we you have guys fanny actually packs? took my idea and are running with this? Oh no, no, fans? this is, this will happen like in 2022. But <laughs> when we do it, this person will get the first swole cast fanny pack. And, and, and comment and like because if Bobo Wilson scores a touchdown, you all get a thousand dollars. No, don't do that. <laughs> and Davis, I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure that's legally binding. <laughs> Can we make it just a full prize pack? Davis will send a Satoshi, and I'll send this uh, dog-eared copy of the Perfect Pass. That's oh, my it. gosh, dude. That book is literally sitting on my bookshelf, and I'm going to go burn it right now for making me for making me so obsessed with that stupid gimmick offense. Swolecast swag bag definitely needs to be a thing. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Maybe maybe you'll tune in. Uh, week six here of the Swolecast on RudderGrinders.com.